Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to teach you how to read a burn down chart in Jira. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Drop a like if you get any value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments section below. Let's jump into Jira. Okay, so here we are in a company managed Scrum project. If you are not in a software company managed Scrum project, your mileage is going to vary. For sure, if you're in a Kanban style, you're not going to get a burn down chart. So you do need to be uh, in a Scrum based company managed project to be able to follow along. If you're in a team managed Scrum, your mileage is going to vary, but it should probably still work. I've never done it before, but I'll have to check after this video. Anyways, let's go into the report and see how this works. So in your go pick your project of choice and you'll have your reports. Now, one thing I do want to disclose here is there is a difference between the burn down chart and the sprint report. The sprint report will actually include a burn down chart, but the sprint reports usually happen at the end of the sprint. While your burn down chart, you're watching it pretty much daily. And so this is what I'm talking about over here. In your sprint report, you'll be able to see from closed sprints the report itself, which includes your burn down, but the data that you get below it is different. What I like and what you should be using is the burn down chart because this one you can monitor daily. This one you can take a look at every single day. And so what I'm going to be teaching you in this video is to try to understand how in the world does this chart work? How do we read it? How do we use it to our advantage? And, and how can we make it really help us be better at managing our work? And so the first thing here is obviously this is a burn down. You don't have to, you don't need this stuff, right? So I can hide this information. And you actually have a little tutorial, a little guide here that teaches you how to read this chart. So if you're more of a reader, go ahead and click on that link and read it. But I'm going to be giving you a quick five minute overview of how this works. Okay. So the first thing is you get to pick your sprint. And so depending on how many sprints you and your team have, you can pick the latest or you can pick a previous one, but make sure you're picking the right one. Because the last thing you want to do is make assumptions and use data points off of the wrong sprint. And so you want to make sure that whenever you're looking at this chart, you're actually looking at the correct chart. Otherwise you're going to be in some trouble, right? So in this case, I'm going to be in my latest JSD sprint five. This is going to say whatever your sprint name is. And then the next very critical thing is your, your measure. So you can use story points or you can use issue count, or you can also use original estimate. Pretty much you can use anything here, but the most common ones are going to be story points. If you're truly an agile team and a scrum team doing ad story points, you're going to be, you're going to want to use story points. The other alternative is if you're kind of still not 100% sure on how to use story points and you just want to do, look at things by counts, you can, I recommend you use the issue counts because that's just going to tell you, well, we brought in 20 issues and here's how many we've closed off. And then finally, if you're more in the micromanaging space and you're actually tracking by original estimate because you're actually having your developers track hours, which is not my cup of tea, but if you do that way, then you have the option to track original estimate and see how that's burning down. But I'm going to stick to just the traditional story points because I actually use the story points for this particular example. All right. So next, let's go look and see what these axes represent. So the axis on the left, the Y, is your story points. So this is going to tell you how many story points your project started off with. Now this part is very critical because it assumes and or not assumes, but it means that when you're doing your sprint planning, when you're in your backlog, you have to estimate and provide story points to all your stories before you hit the start sprint button. The moment you hit the start sprint button, this starts, this initiates right there. And so if you, forgot to add story points, this graph is going to start lower. If you didn't put any, it's going to start at zero. And then if you start adding points later after the fact, after the, after when you hit start, then your chart's going to do all kind of wacky things. So it is very, very important, very, very critical that you appropriately estimate all your stories before you start that sprint button. That way your burnout will actually start at the top. Okay. Now, this, so then this will tell you where we're at, at the start of the sprint. And in case you're curious or wondering, confused, because this is kind of hard to see and you could be curious, confused and whatever I said the first time, all at the same time, you can come down here at the bottom and Jira will actually tell you how many points you started off the sprint with. 
And so in this case, it's 26. 26 is the number we're actually reading here, okay? So just sometimes they're hard to see. Anyways, so that's the starting point. And so now the objective here is for this chart to burn down. And so Jira will draw this gray line for you. This is not something that you have to do. This is automatically in there. And the name of the game is to get the red line. This is your team's actual performance. The name of the game is to get that red line to hug this gray line as close as possible. Obviously, you can see from my example, easier said than done, but that's the name of the game. You wanna to try to stay as close to this gray line as much as possible. And so this is a trajectory. This is just a, a, a forecast of what Atlassian wants you to try to hit to have a successful sprint, right? But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because the most important critical measure is when you go from the highest level, however you want to do it, whether you want to wait two weeks or one week or one day, however you do this, you have to get to be successful. You have to get these points from the highest number, which are your original number, all the way down to as close as possible to zero. So as long as you do that, as long as you get all the way down here, the journey you take is a little less important to me. You should obviously try to hug this as much as possible, but the real world and all, I probably participated in over 200 sprints in my career and it's always easier said than done. But at the end of the day, as long as you get this red line to get as close as possible, if not all the way down to zero, that was a great sprint. But what you don't want to see, what the, some, some gotchas is these flat lines, right? You don't want to see flat lines that span too many days. If you go a week and your line is flat, that means nobody's been updating Jira, or that means everybody's stuck on just the initial work that they signed up to start. This line will only go down when an issue is resolved, when an issue is moved to that last farthest most right column in your board. And so until that happens, this item doesn't go down. So your team might be finishing their code, but you may have a status of like uh, code review or product owner review, and it's not done yet. So until the item goes to done, you're not going to see the dip. And so uh, a common practice that I see is when teams have like a product owner review and they wait until the sprint review, which is at the end of the sprint, this thing will flatline all the way into like the very end and then just take a very big giant nosedive, right? And so not recommended because at that point you, you kind of don't get the feedback you need. So try to close out, try to get product owner reviews as, as soon as possible whenever the feature is done or the story is done so that you can get a, a more appropriately trending burn down. Because the other good thing is if you do that and your product owner catches something, well, you can still open, open the ticket back up and then continue to work on it if you miss the mark, right? So that's one thing to look for. The other thing is any hills. This is a burn down chart, not a burn up chart. And so the trend should be down. And so what happens is any time that you bring in a new story into your sprint and it has story points in it, this will spike up. You want to refrain from spiking your burn down whenever possible. Again, I understand life happens. Some stuff out of scope come, can occur, but you should do a trade-off. You should, if you're going to accept new scope into your sprint, you should also very quickly take something out in exchange because your team already made a commitment to that sprint and that will violate that contract, if you will, of like, this is what we signed up for. So you want to be very, very careful and be very prescriptive as to when and how you accept scope into your sprint. So do not get any hills. This is not a good thing. And then the last thing is down here. I love this section down here. This section down here is gonna give you a play-by-play -play action of what is happening. So every time that you start your sprint, it'll, it'll clock that up, it'll tell you how many issues actually made it in that original scope, and then it'll tell you the points, and then it'll tell you everything, right? But then as your team starts wrapping things up, as they start actually burning things down and they complete something, then Jira is going to tell you there was a burn down. If something would have been added, this would say scope change and it would also tell you how many points it's increased by. And so this is really cool to kind of see a play by play action. Everything that's coming in and coming out and being done in your sprint, this is going to give you everything you need to know. And you can always click on anything in here and then you can go to the history of an issue and see the actual thing, right? So you can see exactly who changed it to done when the timestamp so really really cool things here anyways that's how you read this burn down you just kind of want to follow some of that guidance to try to keep your team focused and in line and if you do that you should yield success right and the last tip i would say is don't bite more than you can chew right 
capacity is a very real thing. And that initial number must be realistic of your team's actual performance and ability to close things out. And so don't sign them up for 200 points if you know your team can bang out 100 points sprint to sprint. Why would you set them up for failure by giving them double the amount of work they can handle? So anyways, that's pretty much it. Hope you found value. If you did, drop a like. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Helps the channel out a lot. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or anything that I need to clarify for you, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.